Welcome to the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. I'm your host, Simone Morris, and I have a passion for empowering others to take responsibility for their careers. Yes, I've written several books on owning your career and am loving hosting this podcast. This podcast is for you if you're willing to make a shift to the driver's seat in your career. We feature leaders who inspire, empower, and motivate you for consistent career action for results. Please continue to join us every Sunday when a new episode is released. Let's get into this week's show. Welcome to this week's episode of the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. I'm so pleased to have with us today, Lynn George, who calls herself a chief meaningful officer. And I'm curious about that. I know you're curious about that as well, listeners. So without further ado, we want to welcome Lynn to the show. Hello, Lynn. How are you today? I am good, Simone. How are you? I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for the invite. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, tell our audience a little bit about this title and about what you're doing today. Awesome. So this title Chief Meaningful Work Officer comes from uh, about 10 years ago, I was hired to um, increase the job placement uh, for a nonprofit that served the homeless population. Mm. And I started my approach, uh, the traditional method of helping, you know, an individual look for work. But then I observed that that wasn't as effective. It wasn't effective and it was really boring for me. And so I started talking about, I started sharing my story and really coming from an approach that was meaningful for the client and really digging into purpose and having that conversation of what that means for them. And that's where I got the title Chief Meaningful Work Officer because when we when I started going taking that approach and helping this um, population look for work, we started we began seeing increase in the job placement um, rate and as well as the job retention rate. Mm. Well, because you mentioned your story. Tell us a little bit more about your story, your journey to the driver's seat in your career. Awesome. So I started workforce development right out of college. Um, It was a desire to work with women in the, back then it was called the Welfare to Work Program. And that's when the one-stop career centers actually began to uh, get started during the Clinton administration. And the reason that was a desire of mine was because those women, they were me. I was a single mom and I had Uh, achieve getting my education. And I wanted to reach back and help other women that walked along the same path that I have, um, that I had um, struggled with. And so that's what started my career in workforce development. But I, I will say, Simone, that it was, I was in default mode of my career for a long time that even though I started with intention of who I wanted to help and how I wanted to help, I was in default mode for a long time. It wasn't until 2009 that I began taking the wheel of my own career and really making it what I really wanted it to be and started thinking about what I want my career, what I want out of my career and what does that look like? So what was the impetus? What, what, what touched your soul in 2009 to say, you know what, it's time for me to at least grab the wheel in my career? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think about that a lot. I get that question a lot. Um, for me, it was a lot of soul searching. Um, I am a very reflective person. Um, throughout my day, I, at the end of my day, at the start of my day, at the end of my day, I love, um, I have to reflect. And so it was really the one question, what was truly important to me? 
and in terms of work. And work, what I realized was that work took on a whole new meaning. Work was no longer something I just, I did to survive, meaning to pay bills, but it became uh, more of an assignment. What is it that I am here to do? Mm, mm, Got you. So over the years, what have you learned in terms of ingredients for a successful career to level up? Are you, would you say today you're in the driver's seat for your career? Absolutely. So one of the, some, so some ingredients, and I love talking about this. One of the biggest things, as you know, Simone, mindset, mindset is everything, right? Where are you with your mindset in owning your career? When you think about what it is that you want, a lot of times we are think we also think about well what does it take for me to get there and when we think about that and we think about well what those steps are sometimes we tend depending on what that is or the direction that those thoughts take us we tend to get discouraged right we it, it will sometimes kind of def- not defeat us but um, we look at it from a, a perspective of, well, I'm not sure if I can do that. So mindset is a big thing. And then understanding what it is that, what are you, why is it that you want it? When we dig into the why, when we dig into the why that we want it, then we begin to unpack some stuff. And when we get past the why and when we get past the unpacking, then we can we can answer the question, well, what am I willing to do or not willing to do to get it? Am I willing to um, really be in a mindset of learning or am I just in a mindset of just always trying to prove that I belong in the in the space that I'm trying to get to? Mm. So having you believe the key ingredients or the your formula for owning your career is about really being in tune with your why your purpose and having the right mindset to succeed so what kind of mindset did you have before and 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 talk talk us through the process of really getting your mind right Mm -hmm. The mindset that I had before was I was waiting for some, I was waiting for someone to tap me to, um, for a promotion. Mm. I thought, you know, I, I, I had big dreams, right? I wanted to achieve more, but I was waiting for some, I was waiting to be recognized. Mm. Mm. And when I realized that, wait a minute, if I want my career to be what it is, then I need to take control of that. Then the next step is, well, what are the opportunities before me? Mm. And what I see and when I understand what the opportunities are, a lot of times those opportunities are around our development mm. or the place that we're trying to get to. See, we skip the development part. Mm. So one mm. of the biggest things for me, even um, of more recent during this pandemic is it's really growth is about development it's not necessarily promote being promoted into something but it's around it's about developing as a person and as a professional Mm. you've got me thinking back to my time in corporate america and i've got a a listeners i have a flipboard uh, a, a flip chart that i often write thoughts down um in my office and you know, I wrote down, you belong, stop waiting. And it it reminds me of my time in corporate America, because I too was waiting, waiting to be recognized. So Lynn, when you say that, that's powerful. And I'm sure that that's resonating for a lot of listeners where we need to pivot and stop waiting. And I love what you said about professional development, because oftentimes you feel you don't have time or you're waiting for someone to tell you what is the professional development that you need to get to the next level. And so you really do need to figure out what you want and then figure out what it takes to get there. Even if you don't know, you can start to interview people to get a little nuggets so that, you know, you can build a plan of how to get from point A or passenger to driver's seat. 
Absolutely. You know, when I was hired for the nonprofit organization to work with homeless, um, to work with the homeless, I remember being um, a little bit hesitant because number one, I hadn't worked with that population. And then the job required me to really engage and interface with community community leaders, business leaders, HR, a lot of HR people. And my thoughts were, oh boy, the introvert in me was like, yikes, what am I going to do? <laughs> right? And so it wasn't the, the organization that said, Lynn, here's a professional development opportunity to help you in this area. It was me asking the question, well, what is it that I truly want for myself? And then identifying those opportunities for me to help me. And so what happened was I ended up, you know, taking courses. You know, it's something as simple as going to Toastmasters, increasing your communication skills and helping you in that area. And it didn't just help me for my job, but it also helped me in other areas. It helped me build confidence to speak up more. Um, I also end up landing a promotion as a result because I was able to speak up more. So a lot of times, you know, it waiting doesn't serve us. Mm. Waiting to be recognized, waiting for someone to recognize your brilliance. You can own your own brilliance. And there are so many tools out there to help you bring that brilliance up and out. And when, and when that happens, then you begin to own your career. Mm, mm. That is landing so well. I, and let me say, I am a fellow Toastmaster. So I, uh, and it is a game-changing move to take, you know, to invest in your development by going to Toastmaster. So let us take a break, a short break, a short commercial break, and we will come back and then unpack these resources that you talk about to, you know, bring the, bring your brilliance to the forefront. So let's take a short break and come right back. Awesome. Hi there. I hope you're enjoying this episode. This interview is amazing. I, I do so love it. I want to just jump in and let you know a couple ways that you can work with me. First of all, you can always go to connectwithsimone.com and it will give you the opportunity to get to my books, uh, website, et cetera. If you want to sit down and have a conversation about your career directly, you can go to careerbreakthroughcall.com and book a free 30-minute call with me to talk about you know, what's happening in your career. Do you need help with building your confidence? Do you need help with identifying uh, strategic relationships that you need for career success? Do you need help building a career plan? Whatever it is, I'm sure that I can help. So do go to careerbreakthroughcall.com and set up a time for us to have a conversation. Again, it's a free 30 minute call to have a conversation. That's it for now. Let's get back to the interview. Welcome back, listeners. We're here with Lynn George, and, and Lynn has got us all amped up about just unpacking our brilliance. And when we last spoke, we talked about the power of Toastmasters and how transformational that was for Lynn, and she got a promotion. So listeners, if you haven't gone to Toastmasters, you want to check it out. Toastmasters.org, I believe, is the um, website. We'll also put that in the show notes. But Lynn, Come back and talk to us about resources to, to let our light shine. Yes. Yeah, so I read a lot. I read a lot of books. I, I call myself the personal development queen because mm. <laughs> I'm all about becoming better than you were yesterday. Mm. Right. And that's what really development is all about professional development, personal development. So as, as, as I mentioned before, Toastmasters is a resource. Um, one of the best books that I've read on career development is by Mike Heider mm. called The Power of Choice. Mm. And it's really powerful. And there's a program out there that is, you know, out there um, taught by organizations um, uh, in, that was inspired by that book, but um, it's an uh, it's an awesome book. And so I I actually 
am all about just learning and really applying those things that you learn because it's one thing that you read, but it's another thing to um, go and apply what you learn. So going back to you know the Toastmasters um, story that I shared, once I began attending those meetings, as I mentioned, they were able, those meetings help me to gain the confidence that I need to speak up more in meetings. And that's what really helped my manager to take notice to say, hey, she she really has some good ideas. Mm. So for those listeners, for some of your listeners that, you know, that who struggle with that, right? It it will help to just take classes, communication classes that will help you uh, to lend your voice more in the workplace so that people can know that you are full of ideas. Mm. Do you have strategies, Lynn, for holding yourself accountable when you take these classes or when you read the book and you want to bring them to life? How do you hold yourself accountable to, to get to doing the work? I think the basis of that is being curious and open to learning. And the reason I say that, and and, and, and part of that too, is being willing to take risks. So I mentioned earlier that I am self-identified introvert. However, that does not mean that I don't like to meet people. So when I get into these spaces, I'm open to meeting people, understanding to learn what do you know? And how can that help me? And what do I know? How can that help you, right? So that goes both ways. And then being able to, um, allowing yourself, well, for me, in my case, allowing myself to invite people in. And so I do a lot of connecting with folks um, to help me hold myself accountable. Like for example, uh, Toastmasters. I had an accountability partner there. I had a mentor, right? I think mentorship is huge. So part of that is really um, the mentorship and and the discipline because you understand what it is that you want. Once you know what you want, that should drive you to discipline yourself in in such a way that you stay on the path. Mm -hmm. what you're trying to get okay and I think also um, another part of that is you know confidence And, and and let me put a pin there Simone back to your question we need people around us that's going to support us in our endeavors you have to have a good support network my husband and I were just talking about this uh, last night because I'm in the process of um, doing some facilitation with partnering with an organization that's working with Microsoft. And I was just kind of reflecting on how did I get to this point? Well, I got to this point. Part of it was just the support around me, surrounding your surrounding yourself with people that's going to be a, your, not just your cheerleader, but that's going to tell you the truth. Mm, love that. Love that. Have the right support squad, um, you know, and, and, you know, if you have a negative person in your circle, I will say this, that you cannot get rid of whether they're family or for some reason you can't, you know, play the chess game and move them out in the near term. What you need to do is to offset the negativity by having multiple people who are really, you know, going to lift you up. So if you have one negative person, let's say get five other people that are really shining and doing things so that it almost drowns out that negativity and you don't have to work as hard to build your confidence. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I say, you know, if they're family members, sometimes, yes, family members are hard to get, you know, but (laughs) do what you need to do to protect your mindset around what is it that you want and that you're going after. Absolutely. You mentioned risk uh, before, and I want to ask you, you know, how in your career have you increased your appetite to take risk? 
I'm going to go back to learning. I heard a workshop. I was watching a video um, on workshop facilitation because that's part of, a, uh, that's getting ready to be a big part of what I do. And she made a statement that really stuck out to me. Learning is vulnerable. Mm. The reason learning is vulnerable because we have to admit that we are improving. And the, and the context of that is if you want people to take risk, to make mistakes and learn, you have, first you need to understand that learn, learning is vulnerable. So when we are in a, an orient, a learning orientation versus a proving orientation, then we open ourselves up to taking more risk or taking the risk that we need so that we can attain who we see ourselves as. Mm. So you were saying we need to lean into the improving orientation? Yes, lean into the, to, to the improving orientation versus the proving. I'm proving mm. that I need, I have to be here. Because, you know, society teaches us like, you know, faking it till you make it. Like I gotta act like I, I belong here. No, it's okay that if you don't know to put yourself in a space of uh, where of people that do know. And sometimes it's not the time to ask questions. Sometimes you're there to learn. Mm. And so when we, when we can embrace that, when we can lean more into that, we do ourselves a huge uh, service to, for our professional development. And, and I believe too, that that is the path that we need to be on towards mastery of what we're trying to uh, attain. Mm, mm. Well said, Lynn, well said. So if you had to title your career body of work, Lynn, what would the title of your career body of work be? Oh my goodness, Simone, that is a huge question. <laughs> take your time, take your time. <laughs> um, so I would have to say that it would have to be around purpose. I am, I think for me, purpose is the basis of chief meaningful work officer. Mm. If you can remember when I, you know, shared my sto story earlier on in the program, um, why I chose that title it is because I be when I began to share my story of being a teen mom and how I came out of that and to where I am now with people that needed to understand that it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you end. And so the, the body of my work is really centered around purpose. Why am I here? Mm. How have I been called to serve? It doesn't matter what has gone on in the past, but how, what have I been called here to do? And then do it. Mm. Reiterate for us, if you will, your purpose. My purpose is for me to create environment and spaces for women to be all that they can be for them to understand that they are enough. Mm. The stories, the, the, your past, your present and your future, it is enough for where you believe that you have been called or assigned to be. Mm. Anytime I hear you are enough, it gives me like the tingles. I just love that so much. I, I, I remember my purpose. I was talking to someone yesterday and saying, I remember back in corporate, they asked us to identify our purpose, a purpose statement. And I came up with, I am the Olympian that leads you to your gold. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that because it's the essence of what I do today. So, you know, you have me, you have the wheels turning in my head, Lynn, it, it, it's been such a joy to have you on the podcast. Any parting words for our audience? My parting words is this, it's to own your career starts with 
the core of who you are. Mm. It's all around identity. Who are you? And then I think it was Dolly Parton's quote that says, decide who you want to be and be it. Mm, what a wonderful way for us to end. Please tell our listeners how they can stay connected with you, Lynn. You can stay connected with me on LinkedIn, um, Lynn George, L-Y-N-N-G-E-O-R-G-E. And you will see that when my name pops up, I think I'm probably one of the first ones, a Chief Meaningful Work Officer, and also my website, lynngeorgeconsulting.com. Awesome, Lynn. Well, it has been a pleasure to have you on the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. Thank you so very much. Thank you for inviting me. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this week's empowering career story on the podcast. If you did, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Wherever you listen to the podcast, be sure that you are subscribing and that you rate and review the podcast. It's so important as we continue to spread the word of career empowerment. In addition, you can head over to the LinkedIn platform and join the Power of Owning Your Career discussion group. There you can have access to the guests who have been on the podcast, as well as others listening to the podcast, as well as myself, where we can continue the conversation. I hope to see you on that platform. You can also email me at pooyc at simonemorris.com if you have a suggestion for guests or a message that you want me to hear personally. Thanks so much and make it an inspiring, empowering week in your career.